Welcome to the October 5th, 2023 City Council meeting. I am City Council President Jim Nash and I will be presiding this evening. Before we begin, I want to let everyone know that this meeting and all participating on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. Um, oh, interesting. This is my preamble from two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, but I can edit. Due to an uptick in COVID infection rates, we are following the recommendations of Health Commissioner O'Leary to take steps to socially distance when meeting indoors. We also have made masks available for those in attendance. I want to thank Commissioner O'Leary for all of the thought she put into helping us organize tonight's meeting. Um, as always, I want to ex extend a special thanks to Northampton Open Media for their efforts to make this hybrid meeting possible. I now call the City Council to order. Laura, can you please call the roll? Sure. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Gore. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor LaBarge. Here. Councillor Miori. Here. Councilor Moulton. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. And Councilor Perry. Here. Council President, you have a quorum. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, it's now time for uh, public comment. There is nobody here in Council Chambers, so I'm assuming we don't have anybody on the list there. Uh, are there folks joining us remotely? If you could raise your hand. And I see Jackie Balance, and I know Jackie and Jacqueline. Jack, Jackie, both Jackies have heard my preamble before, and we may skip it. Okay, um, you guys know the rules. Uh, Jackie Balance, welcome. Uh, good. Thank you, Council Nash. Good evening to the Council. I'm very excited to see that we are going to uh, vote on Carol Collins' appointment as a new capital director. That is very exciting. But I want to mention something about neighborhood conservation districts. Last November, our city planner forbid members of the council and members of the Historical Commission from discussing neighborhood conservation districts with the public until such time as we received the new sustainable historic preservation plan. The draft is here, it's up online, it's on the city's website, and I'm going to send you all an email with that link and some comments. I do want to say that the good news is that the plan, as written up by the Barrett Planner, supports neighborhood conservation districts. And it, it enumerates most of our older neighborhoods as deserving more research and consideration for preservation. Um, the, the Bay State Industrial Center is listed as critical. Bay State Neighborhood is necessary from Montview to West Farms Road, from North Street to South Street. The whole city is a historical treasure. And there was one, oh, I only have 15 seconds. There was one glitch about um, an NCD that was denied. Uh, that was struck in Brookline, and I'll explain that to you in an email I will be sending because time's up. Thank you, Jackie. Next up is Jackie McCreener. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you, Council President Nash. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jacqueline McCreener of Northampton. Our group of residents and downtown business owners who are opposed to the current proposed layout for the Main Street redesign will be addressing the misinformation, omissions, and other issues regarding the city's recent FAQ document. However, for the moment, I would like to address two overarching concerns um, that are somewhat related. One is the lack of democratic processes in our Kansas city government. The other concern is that of healthy, mature trees. 
Democracy is being severely undermined in our city. I don't believe two minutes of public comment properly constitutes democracy. I respectfully urge Mayor Shara, Director Mish, Director Lascalia, and the city council body to work on your efforts to promote community engagement and participation regarding all municipal projects and zoning ordinances. Seriously, please work on being more inclusive and democratic. This is a big issue our city is facing right now. Regarding healthy mature trees, a tree must reach 30 to 35 years of age before it can optimally sequester carbon and produce oxygen. Fast growing saplings simply cannot provide the same benefits. They take decades to do so, and that is only if they can survive the increasing floods and droughts related to the climate crisis. Our healthy mature trees are under threat by the current proposed Main Street redesign, as well as developer-friendly zoning ordinances that have been passed in North Hampton in recent years. Along with the new Massachusetts Municipal Often Specialized Stretch Code, which unfortunately prioritizes new solar installations rather than healthy mature trees. Who wants to live in a denuded North Hampton? I know I don't. A recent report showed that we have lost 133 acres of tree canopy to new development in, in our Canton in the past 10 years. This may not sound alarming to most people, but to tree experts, North Hampton is walking a very precarious line. Please educate yourselves about the importance of prioritizing our healthy mature trees on both public and private land. It basically boils down to survival or extinction. The preservation of nature is essential. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Oh, is there anybody else who would like to speak for public comment? Okay, there's nobody here, and I don't see any hands raised. So we will move on to oh, the... One second. He wants to return. Do you want to speak at public comment? Oh. Yeah, I... I Now's your there. time. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean just in favor. Can you come... Oh, yeah, come on. Speak at the mic. Oh, yeah, turn the mic on. Is the mic it's on? on? It's on. It's your, on. Your name and... Oh, okay. Um, my name's David Ames. Um, I'm a member at the First Churches. I'm also 100% behind the Main Street redesign, but I heard there was going to be some um, possible parking on Gothic Street to help some of the folks, the congregants at the First Church. Uh, so I'm just in support of that. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of the people at the church were concerned about parking that um, would be reduced in front of the church. Uh, so if there can be parking or there could be free parking at Gothic Street, uh, I'm in support of that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. And keep up the good work. Hi. 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 <laughs> he snuck in. He snuck in. OK. Well, that, that's, we'll, we'll take all comments. Um, I see no hands raised on the Zoom, and nobody else has come in the door. Okay, we are now on to the consent agenda. Uh, on the consent agenda, we have the minutes of September 21st, 2023 City Council. We have item 23.376, appointments. Appointment of Chad Dunham as Director of Human Resources. This has a positive recommendation from City Services. We have item 23.380, appointment of Carol Collins as Kappa Department Director. Again, positive recommendation from City Services. We have item 23.381, in order to appropriate FY 2024 CPA funds for community preservation purposes. Um, and that is the consent agenda. Are there any re requests for removals? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Okay. <laughs> Motion made by Councillor Labarge and seconded by Councillor Elkins. Um, Laura, roll, roll call, please. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Perry. Yes. Okay, the consent uh, agenda passes unanimously. 
Uh, next up, we, are, we have financial orders. Did you want to uh, announce them? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's do announcements. <laughs> um, counselors, any announcements? Councillor Foster. Just a brief one. I just wanted to recognize the, the work and the outcome of um, the License Commission. That I, They have really poured a lot of thought and hard work and um, care into their role on the License Commission. And um, I think we're seeing some exciting developments for downtown. And um, it's really nice to be able to, to recognize them publicly and thank them for their work. Here, here. Amen. Thank you. Uh, other announcements. <laughs> well, I have a few. Um, I know the mayor has something she wants to share. Um, so uh, MassDOT will be holding a virtual public hearing on October 11th at 6.30 to solicit input on a proposed East Hampton and North Hampton shared use path on Mount Tom Road. This is on Route 5. Um, a flyer and further information about the event and project details can be found on the city's virtual design public hearing webpage. Um, I want to be clear, this is not a city meeting, so, you know, that we are making full efforts to broadcast that MassDOT is holding this meeting, and, um, and the city won't be running it. It will be run by MassDOT. And, um, and I just want to say this is super good news for the residents of Island Road who uh, basically they're connected to the city by a state highway with a limited um, uh, buffer on either side of the road and to have a, um, a, a shared use path between Island Road and Northampton is a big benefit to them and also um, connecting us with the Manhattan tra Rail Trail uh, for folks who want to visit East Hampton. Um, so there's that. I also have um, information around Damon Road. Uh, the, the Gazette uh, ran a story uh, uh, in the last week detailing that the, um, the, the project is going to run through July 1st of next year. Um, that is true, but the roadway construction that is driving everybody crazy is due to be completed by the end of this month. That, that is the major construction that is hampering um, um, uh, people's commutes. I want to thank Rachel Messier for, uh, with the mayor's office for coming up with that. Um, I also want to note that um, the, um, I, I had my first um, uh, interaction with the DCC. I had somebody send me an email. It had to do with somebody downtown. And, you know, what's the city going to do? And I, I was like, well, we, we have very limited, hold it. It dawned on me, we had the DCC. <laughs> And I was able to forward that email to the DCC. Um, I got a great response, and also the constituent was really happy to have this. We have this service that provides this answer to, you know, questions like somebody who appears to be in need in our city. Um, and the last thing I want to say I was want to congratulate all of us, but especially the mayor and the finance director for our triple A rating. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, once again, we've pulled this off. Um, not pulled it off, it's, it's a lot of hard work. And that, um, you know, council is part of that process, that, you know, that we're asking the hard questions, and that, um, but that the hard work is, is with the mayor and, and with um, finance director Nardi, uh, just terrific work. So those are my announcements. Any others? Mayor, I think you have something. I do. I have a, I have a few announcements. Um, first of all, thank you for that recognition about the uh, the reaffirming of the AAA bond rating. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you all, as you said, for your hard work to make that happen. Um, and thank you, Councillor Foster, for recognizing uh, the License Commission. Um, I, too, want to recognize their hard work. And um, also would like to recognize Annie Lesko in my office, who's the licensing coordinator, um, and Chief of Staff Alan Wolf. The two of them are the economic 
economic development team and they also um, did a lot of work behind the scenes to get us to where we are so um, I'm very grateful for everyone who uh, has brought us to this sort of new era in downtown which is great um, so I have two I have three things to talk about first I want to announce that members of the peace movement here in the valley are having a peace and environment fair on Saturday October 14th from 10 to 12 in Pulaski Park and they're hoping people will join them to talk about issues that threaten our world and um, maybe even more powerfully to talk about the work that's being done in our valley community to change the causes of that threat so uh, join them on October 14th from 10 to 12 in, in Pulaski Park. Um, a reminder again that Monday, this Monday, October 9th, um, Indigenous Peoples Day and also Pula the Pulaski Day uh, Ceremony and Parade, which starts at 11.30 from St. Valentine's Polish National, um, and then ends in Pulaski Park with ceremonies and speeches. Um, so please join us for that. And then moving on, I wanted to give the council an update on Coca-Cola and the water and sewer base rate charges. Um, I know you all have received some questions from residents from uh, what was reported in the brief story uh, on October 1st in the Gazette about Coca-Cola. What was shared there is true, but does not give the full picture of the status of the plant and operations. So I thank you for the opportunity to elaborate on that and, and bring you uh, up to what we know um, right now. So first, I can confirm that um, Coca-Cola, or that we are actively working with Coca-Cola's real estate team to market the property. Uh, this is alongside state economic development agencies and with the support of the governor's team and Congressman McGovern, and of course our local legislators, Senator Comerford and Representative Sabadosa. Um, we have seen their marketing materials. Uh, Director Lascalia has answered detailed questions from their realtor about technical specifications of the plant, and we are working to insert language about the many advantages of doing business in, uh, in Northampton and what a great place it is to have a business um, into the pitch. I'm not yet aware of any tours that have been taken uh, to date, but um, that they are now actively moving to marketing is a really big step. Um, we also know that the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development, along with the Mass Hire Franklin Hampshire Workforce Board, are working closely with Coke to help the more than 300 employees that the plant's closure will displace. We know that Coke is holding a job fair um, uh, tomorrow, no, sorry, next week, on October 11th from 1 to 4 for about 300 employees on their in their production side. I'm oh, sorry. 30 employees, not 300, 30 employees um, on the production side. Um, and we know that although they have extended their estimated timeline a little by two to three months, they have already significantly reduced their production. So based on our most recent numbers, water is already down almost 38% and sewer is down about 28% from uh, September, comparing September 2022 to this uh, September 23, um, just from Coke. As recently as December of 22, we billed Coke $110,000 for sewer, sewer services in that month. Last month, it was $61,615. So since Coca-Cola's expansion came online in August of 2011, the city of Northampton has not seen demands this low from the plant. So we are back to where we were uh, 13 years ago before they did their large expansion in terms of use. So the reality is that we are nearing the end of the line with Coke. Minor variations in their schedule for their imminent closure measured in weeks are really insignificant compared to the larger challenge that we face. And in April when I proposed and you all uh, passed the base rate fee changes, we found what continues to be the best solution to a terrible situation that we're in um, and one that allows us to provide the best relief to our most vulnerable residents. So, and um, I also want to remind the council of something that we talked about a lot during that deliberation, which is that there has not been a water or sewer usage rate increase for a very long time. So this base rate charge is purely filling the hole that Coke is leaving. So as you know, the city must submit a balanced budget for our enterprise revenue every year in June before the start of the new fiscal year. Those decisions are based on the best information we have at that time. Based on what we know now at this moment, if we had not made that change, we would already be showing a revenue deficit just from the first quarter of the fiscal year. So the council should rest assured that while hard, you made the necessary decision. And if we hadn't, we would be looking at a very significant problem with DOR. Our best intelligence says that this is only a 
two to three month delay that they're proposing, uh, depending on when they leave in March. Their large drop in water usage and the fact that they are actively moving to market the property, which we have been asking for for two years, and uh, they hadn't until now, is an excellent indicator that they are very much scaling back production to a stop, uh, which will likely occur, the production will likely occur before March. They don't just stop production and the heavy water use on the day that they walk out the door. Um, the revenue loss will continue to grow as we get closer to their end. It's a very large job to decommission a plan like that. So we'll continue to monitor this every month to make sure that the two enter enterprises remain solvent as they absorb these really astronomical hits to their revenues. So thank you for letting me update you on that and as I said we'll, we'll keep watching it every month um, but this we are, uh, it is happening and we are seeing a huge reduction in their usage. Thank you. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay. Hearing none, let's go to the consent. No, we did that. Okay. Uh, next up is financial orders. Uh, we have item 23.383 in order to appropriate. $30,000 from stabilization to define extent of contamination at 33 King Street. Um, Mayor, would you like to speak to this? I think, uh, Director Mary, will I also turn this on? So, Chad Dunham and Carol Collins are on, on the Zoom, and so I just I wanted to say congratulations to them. Oh. And, um, they, you can uh, round of go, applause. Go do other things, but congratulations to you for being. Con oh, good! They're turning the cameras on. Welcome. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> All right. Well, we're doing things a little out of order, and I guess that's okay. All right. So um, that gave Director Nardi time to be prepared. Okay, for this item. Oh, she here. was born prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I live up to that. Um, so, did you did you want me to read the order? Do you want me to just discuss? You know the what? Order? I can read the order. Okay. I'm operating with one computer tonight. Um, yeah, if you could read the order, <laughs> I'll make a point of doing the next. Okay, so upon the recommendation of Mayor Shara, whereas the city has undertaken a phase one and phase two environmental site assessment of 33 King Street prior to taking ownership of the property from the Commonwealth, and whereas the results of the site assessment generally identified one area of contamination on site for which a construction protocol and response will be needed to will need to be developed. And whereas these initial findings did not result in defining the outer limits of the contamination and those limits may go off site, and whereas prospective developers may consider it too risky to bid on a project without knowing the full extent of the geographic boundaries of such contamination. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the City Council appropriate $30,000 from the General Stabilization Fund for the purposes of further investigation of the extent of contamination at 33 King Street. That was really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm living up to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tonight we're asking you for $30,000 $30, from the Stabilization Fund um, because uh, it was recommended from the environmental engineer that this be added to make sure that prospective bidders have all the information they need when they bid. And we want to make sure when we put out the RFP that it's a very strong RFP and that people are actually bidding on it. Questions, Councilor? Uh, Councilor Jared. Thank you. Um, can you explain the math again? Is this part of the expenses <laughs> for this project? So when we sell it, it comes off the top and then we split it with the state? Is that correct? Okay. So this is an eligible expense that we can deduct from the total sale before we make the split. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Councilor Moulton. Uh, thank you. Um, so what uh, what catches my attention here is the uh, the possibility that those limits may go off site. So will this uh, investigation not stop then at the boundary of 33 King Street if, in fact, there's a suggestion that the contamination continues on? 
And, and so it will truly then define the limits, even if those limits are beyond 33 King Street. Uh, the mayor is shaking her head, so I'm going to say yes. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's understanding the boundaries of that con contamination, which even I, if we, I think we, we are fairly certain, if we don't know for sure, do go off-site. Yep. And, and onto private property. Yes, correct. Thank you. Councillor Maori. Yeah, so um, this is just investigating the contamination. Um, is there a plan or is it part of um, the deal that we, were, we will clean up the contamination or is it just to give a report to any prospective buyers? It's to inform prospective buyers and there is a piece of this um, funding that will also go for a report to, to DEP. Councillor, Councillor Labarge. Yes, thank you. Stan really came out with a question that I wanted to ask, but now I have another question, please. Okay, so what happens here if an area that we're looking at is contaminated? You're saying that this needs to be done because apparently it could stop somebody to go ahead and attempt to buy this property. So either which way, can you explain? So I think what we want to do is we want to identify how far the contamination is, what the boundary is, so that we're not cleaning it up. We're selling the property as is. So we want to inform prospective buyers what the property actually, what the contamination is, how large it is, so that when they bid, they know that there is going to be, have to be cleanup that they will be responsible for. Okay, that was another question. Yep. So this is, an, this is known, the contamination is known that it's there. So we just want to give prospective buyers all the information they possibly can have to know what those boundaries are of it. Uh, Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, I think that the mayor and plus our financial director has explained it very thoroughly and also with our questions. So I'd like to make a motion to move this to the consent agenda. I think they're looking for uh, suspension of the rules. Yes. So um, would you be interested in making a motion to suspend the, the rules so we could Yes, I would like to go <laughs> suspend those rules. Okay. Second. Motion made by Councillor Labarge. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Moulton <laughs> uh, to suspend the rules for so we can approve this tonight. Uh, any discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none. Uh, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Lamarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. <laughs> yeah, yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Yes. Okay, we have suspended our rules, and now we can uh, we can entertain a motion for approval this evening. Move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Second. So motion made by Councillor Mayori, seconded by Councillor Jarrett for approval this evening. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Gore. Yes. yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Okay, item 23.383, in order to appropriate $30,000 from stabilization to define extent of contamination at 33 King Street has been approved. Next up is item, no, I'm going to go to my trusty screen here. Uh, item 23.384, in order to appropriate $15,000 to hire Stantec to evaluate parking fee structure. Uh, this is in first reading. Um, upon the recommendation of Mayor Shera, um, whereas in 2023, City Council adopted a modification to pricing, parking, and management for the 
the public parking spots in downtown and whereas these changes include an alteration of fees on Main Street and the side streets in order to increase turnover of parking spaces. Oops. Oh, I do. It's okay. I won't find my. <laughs> uh, in order to increase, where did I go? <laughs> Sorry about that. Did I leave it up or? No, I'm, I'm good. Uh, targeted go over. Whereas these changes included an alteration of fees on Main Street and the side streets in order to increase turnover of parking spaces on Main Street with a targeted goal of achieving around 85% occupancy. Whereas these changes also specified that the mayor's office would regularly evaluate the pricing to determine if it was achieving the goal of 85% occupancy. Whereas the city council implemented these new parking changes in April of 2023, and whereas it has been six months since implementation, and the mayor's office would like to have the first analysis of the effectiveness of these changes to be performed by the same consultant who recommended these and who can also evaluate how the new pricing structure has changed parking patterns and whether we should make any other adjustments and whereas the City Council further, ben further benefit from this outside, outside consultant to create a tool so that the City can on its own conduct periodic evaluations of how the parking system is working and whether adjustments are necessary. So, $15,000. So, I, I don't have much more to add to that. I, I think there's a lot of information in there, but um, we do want the $15,000 so that um, we get an analysis of the impact of the changes that were voted by you and, and what we are seeing um, six months later, have we achieved our goals? And then we also want the tools and training to make sure that we can do this moving forward on our own. Any questions? Oh, I gotta get over here. Councillor Maori may. <laughs> Councillor Maori. Yeah, so, so you're saying, to, when you say do this on our own, you mean evaluate? Yes. Right. So okay. we need we would like the tools and the training to so that we can look at this data um, that they that they collect um, in the same manner. <coughs> Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Director Nardi, it, and what would be the timeline on getting a report? I do not have an answer to that question, but um, I would guess it's not going to, it, it shouldn't be that long because they're gonna actually basically take the same type of data they use to make the um, uh, recommendations. So I would say, uh, I would say a month at most. Um, yeah. Councilor Jared. And is the data, do we get data from our parking apps and such that, that tell us what the occupancy is in a particular area yes. already so it's not like someone we don't have to sit there and, and look well we can we already know historical data yes so we we do get a lot of different reports from the different systems i think what we'll be getting is this company um, has already looked at it once to make the recommendations but i think um, we're going to learn how to better use the data so that we can look at it as well in the same kind of um, under the same lens right Great, thank you. All right, counselors. Okay, this is a financial order on first reading, and it does not have a request to be approved tonight. Counselor LaBarge, I see you. I don't see anything about um, requesting or suspending the rule. No, so it would be a choice of do we want to send this to the finance committee or do we want to have this go on the consent agenda? Right? I would make a motion to place this on the consent agenda. Second. Okay, motion made by Councillor LaBarge, seconded by Councillor Elkins to place this on the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Before you vote, can I just make uh, one additional comment? Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is, so the goal actually with doing this is to create a dashboard that will be available for everyone to be able to, to uh, access on the city website. Oh, so we'll have live, in, would there be information we could just go in there and anybody can check it out? Yes, correct, thank you. 
Very interesting. Okay. Uh, Councillor Foster. Can can I take that side just one more? So you're saying like to create a dashboard so we'd all be able to check out on the website, but I'm thinking like is it something somebody could be coming into town and say, oh, there's 60% uh, occupancy on Main Street? Or is it like <laughs> that level or like just more like a higher level? So I'm getting this information. Um, <laughs> three dots. Three dots. <laughs> Not necessarily in real time. Okay. Good. Well, and this will be around for second reading, likely if this passes our motion uh, in two weeks. So maybe further information may be available then. Okay, uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Lafarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Bolton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councilor Elkins. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. And Councilor Gore. Yes. Okay, item 23.384, in order to appropriate $15,000 to hire Stantec to evaluate parking fee structure. Um, that will be on the consent agenda at our next meeting on the 19th. Next up is order 23. Uh, point two eight five in order to reprogram twenty two thousand dollars for JFK fire alarm panel replacement. And Director Nardi is there. Where'd you go? Um, Oh, this one's pretty easy. Twenty-two <laughs> ordered that twenty-two thousand from the Ryan Road School Library Air Conditioning Project account be reprogrammed to replace the fire panel at JFK School. Okay, now you're up. So yes, um, twenty-two thousand dollars be reprogrammed um, after an inspection. It was determined that the fire panel. Um, was uh, not operating properly, so they have already moved forward with with the repair, but um, which is why we're asking for a waiver tonight, um, so that we have the the funds available um, when the invoices um, come in. Um. Any questions, Councillor? Councillor Jarrett, I'd move to suspend the rules so we can vote tonight. I second it. Okay, motion made by Councillor Jarrett, seconded by Councillor Labarge to suspend the rules so we can approve this tonight. Any discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Bolton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elder. <coughs> yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Okay, the rule has been suspended and we can entertain approving this tonight. A motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Moulton for approval tonight. Any discussion? Hearing none, Laura, roll call please. Councillor Maori. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Sierra. Yes. And Councillor Yes. Okay, item 23.285 in order to reprogram $22,000 for JFK fire alarm panel replacement has been approved. Next up is item 23.386. In order to reprogram funds for JFK community room AC replacement. Okay, what is that screen? The director Nardi is, can, do you have the order? <laughs> I don't, that's the one I don't have. I printed. Oh, okay. I'm going to pull, I get apologize. it. Apologize. Which one is? It should be $9,985 from the Ryan Road School Library Air Conditioning Project account be reprogrammed to replace the AC. To replace the failed air conditioning at the in the community room at JFK School. 
right? It's the a AC in the talking about. It's the next one. Yes, failed air conditioning in the community room. Yep, sorry. Yep. I'm sorry, I'm bringing another computer next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I should have been prepared too, I apologize. Um, so yes, so this, um, again, um, we're asking for a waiver because uh, it was discovered um, that the two um, AC condensers, is that what they're called, um, broke. Uh, it involves replacing the AC compressors, excuse me, um, and involves a crane to replace them. Um, but they want to make sure that all the work is done so that they are prepared for the um, weather next year. And they also want to get the work done before we see snow on the ground if a crane is involved. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Mould? Um, since both of these are taking uh, funds from the uh, Ryan Road uh, School Library Air Conditioning Project, is that a project that these are excess funds or did that project not, not happen? Yes, those are funds from the FY 2020 uh, capital plan. Um, that project was completed. The Ryan Road Library AC project was completed. Um, and these are just excess funds. They actually, um, the cost of the project came in much less according Great. to Supervisor Kersnick. Thank you. Stars. Okay, uh, any other questions? I will move to suspend the rules so we can approve this. Second it. Motion made by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Labarge to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none, Laura, roll call please. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Yes. <laughs> okay, the rule is suspended. Now we need a motion to approve this. Move to approve. <coughs> Second. Second. Motion made by Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Gore. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Gerard. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Miori. Yes. And Councillor Yes. Yes. Okay. Item 23.386, in order to reprogram funds for JFK Community Room AC replacement. <coughs> has been approved. <laughs> Next, we have um, ordinance relative to, uh, we have item 23.382, an ordinance relative to stop signs on Olander Drive in Ford Crossing. This is in first reading. Uh, and um, we also have another one relative uh, to item 23.387 in ordinance, ordinance to make Sunday parking free in Gothic Street Garage. Um, I'm actually thinking we might want to talk about them separately, although it's for referral. Um, so um, let's deal with 23.382 first. Um, I could talk about that one. Go ahead. Okay. Unless, do you want to, Councilor Gore? I, f I forgot we're both there with TPC. Yeah. All right, I was ready for my moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you look at the map, the stop sign diagram, um, there, it it's, um, kind of leaves off a whole development on the north end of Olander Drive. There's the, the red circle, um, and that's indicating where um, the proposal is to place a stop sign. Um, a couple years ago, um, there was a traffic study done at Village Hill to look at placing stop signs, and it was discovered that some of the signs there were not supported by city ordinance. Um, and mm -hmm. there's different things that, uh, warrants that need to be met to place stop signs. Um, the traffic volume at Village Hill is quite low, but the sight lines um, warranted the placement of a stop sign. The only thing I want to point out on this map is that um, north of where that red circle is is a, a private development. There's the Village Hill co-housing and the North Commons, which is 57 units um, of affordable and workforce housing um, kind of off the map there, and those are private roads. So the city would just be looking at Ford Crossing 
in Olander, um, but I've been in touch with um, the community builders, which built and manages the um, the housing on the north end about placing their own stuff in their private park. Oh, and the neighborhood is is very in support. Um, so um, you know, it's it's just kind of cleaning up final details from that traffic study a couple of years ago. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this has been to the TPC. Yes. Both of these. Um, the the stop sign. And then the, um, there's the next one. Um, All right. Gore, we'll I talk don't. About that yeah, one. I don't remember the other one being at TPC. Okay. But this uh, this item is from the TPC with a positive recommendation. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, councilors. Councilor Jarrett. Uh, so legislative matters is not scheduled to meet until November thirteenth presently, which means we wouldn't be back here for approval for November sixteenth for either of these two items. I guess uh, is is that a concern? Um, just you know, let me and or Lara know as. Okay. as uh, and we, we could look at scheduling something sooner if necessary. Thank you. Councillor Foster. I'm not, I'm not counting. I'm just wondering, um, my sense for this particular ordinance, that wouldn't be a concern, but um, I'm just thinking of the 45 days, or 90 days to act. I'm just wanting to make sure that we are able to act in time from referral. Um, that's, that's the only concern. And I'm trying to remember the number of days. Yeah, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but um, we can look at that. And, and it sounds like the, the chair of legislative matters is open to scheduling something that will help uh, to uh, facilitate this moving forward. So They have 60 days to act uh, to report legislative matters. So that shouldn't be a problem. OK. Um, any further discussion on the, and so this item, um, it's been to the TPC and um, it's here for referral. We could send it to other committees, but uh, it being an ordinance, it needs to be <coughs> legislative matters. A motion for referral. <laughs> Move to refer it to legislative <laughs> matter. <laughs> Everybody jumped on. Four Let's second. give Rachel, uh, right. Councillor Mayori, the motion, and I'll give Councillor Elkins the second on referral to legislative matters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A any discussion? Further discussion on referring this to legislative matters. Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Lavard. Yes. Councillor Leori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay, so item 23.382, an ordinance relative to stop signs on Olander Drive and Ford Crossing have been referred to legislative matters. Next up is item 23.387, an ordinance to make Sunday parking free in Gothic Street Garage. And I think the only thing we have a Filling it up, the ordinance has a crossing out Sunday to make this happen. Yeah, you can pull, can you pull sure. it up? And so, um, Mayor, you want to give us an idea of uh, what we're up to here? It looks like we, we want to make it so people can park there on Sundays without having to pay a fee. Yes. So, um, Director Mish and I were meeting with Reverend uh, Sarah Buto from First Churches recently, and um, she mentioned this issue and brought it to our attention that the Gothic Street Garage, which is owned by the courthouse, but we have a lease with them to use it um, after courthouse hours and on the weekend, that um, their 
the, the congregation likes to use it, um, and it's very helpful for them. This, so we actually were having this conversation with her. Um, we had met with her to talk about the Main Street redesign um, and sort of the area in front of First Churches. And one of the things that she brought up is um, is parking. And with the loss of parking, um, it would be really helpful to the congregation to uh, be able to use that garage on Sunday without paying a fee. And um, it was sort of a surprise to us that there would be a charge on Sunday. We don't charge for parking anywhere else on Sunday. And we looked into the ordinance. And um, and and um, Director Forstall and, and uh, Director Mish kind of looked into it to try and figure out if there's a rationale for it. We can't figure out why uh, the ordinance calls for um, a charge on Sunday. And so we are asking that we remove that so that anyone can park there, uh, but certainly that it can help the faith community um, on Sundays to be able to use that garage. Um, you know, it's right behind First Churches. It's not far from Edwards Church. Um, so this, you know, would be a, a location where people could be able to park on Sundays during service. Yes. Sir Jared. Um, but we do charge for parking in the the main oh, garage the, on Sundays. Is that correct? Um, yes, that is true. We don't, but we don't charge in the lots. Yeah. Right. So you're seeing the Gothic Street garage is, is more in line with with. The with the lots. sort of the surface lots um, and I should know we looked at what we bring in for revenue it's a tiny tiny amount I think in 2022 it was um, like hundred and twenty dollars so this is a very tiny revenue change mm -hmm. yes and, and is is it even being in enforced really I mean there's nobody to enforce on Sunday right that's true there's no parking enforcement on Sunday but um, the honest souls who are using it are paying <laughs> some fee. Yes, no, fair enough. Uh, enough that there is a tiny bit of revenue that that we get from it, but really not not enough that I think uh, we wouldn't be happy. Or I feel like we wouldn't be happy to offer that benefit to first churches and the rest of the community on Sunday. To, to be clear, I'm just always interested in enforceability, not yes. not suggesting. Yes, you are correct. There is no enforcement. Yes. So the parking garage. So maybe this is sort of a, a relevant difference to the EJ Gare garage, right? Which has an arm and you know a, a way to enforce that. There's really no way to enforce this. This has a kiosk, right? I I, I, think I will admit I haven't been there in a long time. I think it. Yeah. I'm gonna trust the lawyer. And, and this is, and we charge for overnight parking here. So this is 75, per, 75 cents an hour starting at 5 p.m. and goes until the courthouse opens the next day. Is that how it right, works? Right, so it's 5 p.m. to 6 a.m. People can park, so during snow emergencies, things like that, people can park there. Um, that's Monday through Friday, and then all day on Saturday, and it had been all day on Sunday as well. So when courts not when the courthouse is not in use, and this is uh, you know a lease and agreement that we had with with the court for use of this garage. Um, so this is also far referral to legislative matters, or possibly or other. It, did, I would move it to the consent agenda. If that's legal. well, I think we, it needs to go to. I You'd have to. Needs to go to legislative Come matters. On. Then I would move you to. Send it to legislative I'll rules. second that. Unless we waive the rules. Uh, I will request to waive waive the rules, so we can get these good church folk going. Well, I, so. Okay, so you'd like to make that motion? Yes. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, <laughs> to waive the rules on referral so we can approve this tonight. Um, and um, I think there was a motion on the floor already. Right. Oh, maybe needed to be withdrawn? I, I would with, withdraw it. I'll second it. Okay, so your motion's withdrawn. withdrawn. Now we have a motion. To suspend the rules. Uh, suspend the rules on this made by Councillor Perry and seconded by who was it was it Councillor Jerry? Councillor Moulton uh, Councillor Moulton thank you 
I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, so um, any discussion on suspending the rule around referral? Councilor Moulton. <laughs> yes, I, I am, uh, I, I, and, and I, I would not do this very often to, to bypass the Legislative Matters Committee, but in this case, I think that it was an oversight, and maybe at some point somebody simply said, well, it's a garage, so let's treat it like the E.J. Gear garage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's covered, but it's not really a garage, and I agree that it is much more akin to the, to the open lots in that area, and I think because we've heard uh, from, from uh, parishioners uh, of the downtown churches that it would be useful to them to to in fact enact what is is uh, the practice now of not enforcing Sunday parking there, I'm I'm let's get it done as quickly as possible. So I, that's why I'm favor suspending the rules. Councilor Foster, you know I I will probably get there, but I'm not there right now. Um, given that it is a garage and we have another garage where we are paying, I understand that we're viewing it more as a lot and that's probably where I'm going to get to as viewing and, and want to look into it and consider, but I wouldn't be ready to vote on that tonight without further consideration. Well, I, I have a thought on this, but I, you know, I, um, I, this particular location because the revenues have been so small for years that I've, I've always uh, felt that um, in terms of uh, parking for downtown employees that if we found a way to better market this particular location for folks who are getting out of work at you know 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning um, Many of the, the folks getting out at those hours are walking around with cash in their pockets from tips from jobs that they've been working at. Um, and um, and I, I'm wondering if uh, I, uh, that we could consider ways that it would make it more appealing to uh, the, the downtown workers to use this lot. It would keep them, it would keep workers from using uh, uh, parking spaces on Main Street or, you know, spaces that we want uh, visitors to downtown to be using. Part of the reason, part of the difficulty with this lot is identifying it as actually a public lot, is that people will drive by it and during the day it clearly looks like it's part of the courthouse. Uh, at night it looks like it's still part of the, the police department. Uh, but I think if we put the word out to uh, 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 downtown employees and let them know, here's a place you could park, um, and uh, I, I think there's something we, we could do there. And the mayor, I'm going to recognize, Councillor Elkins. Um, yeah, I, and part of the reason I was I was prepared to kind of move is because I know this parking lot uh, quite uh, this uh, garage quite well. I think, um, and maybe the mayor is about to address this. I think during the day it's mostly not available for parking because it it's it is dedicated to parking for court staff. Mm -hmm. um, so we really are talking about a, a very small number of spaces that are are really only available after hours and on weekends. <coughs> Yes, I, 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 we need to make this very, very clear because it is not a public lot um, except for these very specific hours that are in the ordinance. And people will be ticketed and towed if they park there. If they're during um, the court hours, it is just for staff. And I don't, I don't know what the process is if there's people have placards or they have something. If you don't have what's needed um, to park in that lot during the non-public hours you will be towed. So it's, it's very different than EJ Gare. Right. Um, it is really the courthouse um, lot and we just have this lease agreement to use it after hours and on weekends. Councilor Jarrett. Um, I wanted to address Councilor Foster's concern that suspension of the rules to waive referral does not mean we have to vote on it tonight. Rather it will show up uh, as in second reading in two weeks. So we just wouldn't have the meeting in legislative matters, if, if that was your intent. I was going to actually clarify myself. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that helps you feel more comfortable knowing that we would have 
the two weeks. Yes, may I? Yeah, go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, you don't want to speak out of turn. Yes, that, that's great. I would be fine with waiving the rules to refer the referral um, if we're voting in two weeks, um, but wouldn't be ready to vote tonight. Yes. Got it. Okay, so on the floor is a motion to suspend the rules around referral. This item will be here in two weeks. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councilor Elkins. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Gore. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. And Councilor Perry. Yes. Okay, item 23.387 an ordinance to make Sunday parking free in Gothic Street Garage. Uh, we have suspended the rule on that. Um, and I think we're done talking about it tonight and it will appear on our agenda at our next meeting. Okay, next up, we have uh, two ordinances. We have item 23.378, an ordinance relative to parking on Locust Street. Uh, this is was referred to legislative matters. It's here with a positive rec recommendation. Uh, this has also been to the TPC and I believe Councillor Jarrett can speak to this. Sure, yeah. Yeah, we had a good uh, discussion at, at uh, Legislative Matters about this ordinance. So this is a, um, uh, about parking on Locust Street. It is to address sight line issues as people are pulling out of Straw Avenue especially, but also there's three parallel dead-end streets um, <clears throat> as you head toward Florence Center. And they also have a similar issue. So it restricts the parking uh, near the intersections and actually for one whole block, um, it also restricts the parking completely and that the reason for that has to do with um, additional interactions that are happening and there's a left turn lane um, so so the DPW recommended that the whole block from Fairfield to Plymouth be no parking um, the there have been some concerns by residents because currently there is a temporary no parking uh, ordinance that is restricting the entire block, uh, the entire multiple blocks from Straw Avenue. And that temporary restriction, uh, it's clear, is too much. It's, it's pushing too much parking over to the side streets um, and causing congestion um, on, on some of those little side streets. So, but um, we feel, and the DPW director and I spoke today, and, and um, we feel confident that with the li with limited parking available uh, on Locust Street, once the one if this passes, that that is sufficient to alleviate that that parking congestion on the side streets. So I I uh, am in support of passing this tonight. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Move to approve. I'll second that. Okay, I think Councillor Foster made the motion and then it was, let's give it to uh, uh, Councillor Elkins for the second. Um, any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, Laura, roll call please. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maury. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. 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 Okay. Item 23.378, an ordinance relative to parking on Locust Street has been approved. Next up is item 23.379, an ordinance relative to parking on William Street. Uh, this was referred to legislative matters. It's back here with a positive recommendation. Um, and it, um, uh, and it's been to the TPC. It was at the TPC actually back in May and we kind of lost track of this. Um, and I can speak to this because um, 
I worked with DPW on this. So this is at a T intersection uh, where Montview meets William Street. Uh, there is a, um, a construction project at that location, which I can't talk about, but uh, that the concerns that people raised uh, predated that construction project. It had to do with traffic flow through that intersection. Uh, uh, DPW went out and looked at the intersection and it was their recommendation to eliminate parking directly across uh, from the uh, where Montview uh, intersects with William Street. Uh, we, we have a regulation that no car can park within 20 feet of an intersection, but when you have T intersections like this, it doesn't <coughs> necessarily apply directly across the street. So in this case, um, DPW uh, recommended creating this uh, uh, parking restriction here, uh, and that um, and I, and I'm grateful that DPW actually went out um, uh, earlier, uh, I, I guess last week, and they actually put out temporary no parking signs uh, due to um, our collective delay on getting it to council tonight. So um, that's the item that's here, and I'll entertain a, um, a motion to approve. Move and approval. Second. Motion made by Councillor Jarrett, seconded by Councillor Moulton. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Miori. Yes. Yes. Council yes. Council Perry. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Item 23.379, an ordinance relative to parking on William Street has been approved. Uh, we have no zoning ordinances, no resolutions. Um, I think we do have a little new business, um, and it's and I think I can speak for my co-sponsors here. Um, my, myself, uh, Councillor Foster, Councillor Jarrett, and Councillor Labarge will be, are working on a resolution in uh, support of the downtown redesign and that, um, and that um, we, um, we're expecting other counselors would like to be able to speak to this item and, and, and also show their support for the process. Um, we're hoping to uh, bring this resolution to council in two weeks and, um, and, that, um, and we're looking forward to collaborating with counselors once we, we have it on the floor. But um, we thought that um, you would you would like to know that there would be an opportunity for council to speak to this. And, um, and I really appreciate my, the, the co-sponsors working on this right now. So stay tuned. Is there anything we, else we wanna add? Sounds good. All right, uh, any other new business? Okay, hearing none, we are now down to adjourning. I will move to adjourn. Second it. There you go. Motion made by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Labarge to adjourn. There's no discussion on adjournment. Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Jeff. Yes. 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 Councillor Yes. 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 Okay, we are adjourned, everybody. 809, that's pretty good. <laughs>